My name is Tom Bresson. I'm with the Urban Farmer Store in the Bay Area. And when we go to put in an irrigation system, one of the most crucial bits of information we need is to know flow and pressure. This will determine our design capacity, which means how many drip emitters I can have on at one time or how many sprinklers on at one time. And so the first thing we want to do is find out what our static pressure is. Our static pressure is pressure at zero flow. So we put it on a pressure gauge onto the hose bib and turn it on. And the pressure that we get here, and it can vary between 40 and 120 PSI, so that's why we ask you to take it, uh, will be our static pressure. So if we were to chart that, we would have pressure up here and we'd have flow up here. So as our flow increases, our pressure decreases. So if we were to design a system, we would want to find out how much flow we can use before the pressure gets too small. When we measure flow and pressure, often with sprinklers, it's too low. With drip system, we often have way more flow than we need and too much pressure. So if we were to look at a drip system and we very use very little percentage of the water we have, our pressure is too high. So that's why we often put in a pressure regulator to bring it down to the 20 to 30 PSI that the equipment likes to use. And with sprinklers, sometimes where flow is way out there and it goes below the pressure needed for that. So first of all, if we have static pressure, we know the starting point that we can lose pressure from. Then we want to find out what our flow is. And flow is affected by pressure, but it can be different. I had a situation where I, I had a, a 100 plus PSI, but only got one gallon a minute. It turned out this hose bib was connected to a long run of galvanized pipe, that the flow passage was bad. So flow is another bit of information that's pretty easy to find. This is a five gallon bucket and flow we want to know our gallons per minute. So when, before I turn this on I'd get a, a stopwatch or my hands of uh, the second hands of a clock and find out how many seconds it takes to fill. So I turn this on full blast and let's say at full blast it takes 30 seconds to fill five gallons. I have five gallons in 30 seconds or 10 gallons a minute. 10 gallons a minute, if I was to use it all, I would be out here. So after years, we've determined that in most cases, we can use about 75% of our available water. But this place safe and use 70%. So if I have 10 gallons a minute and I can use 7, uh, 0.7 or 7, 70%, I can use 7 gallons per minute. Okay, since we're, this is going with a, a drip training module, we don't really care about gallons per minute. We have to figure out gallons per hour because every drip emitter uses a certain output that's rated in gallons per hour. So I take my seven gallons a minute times 60 minutes in an hour, and that's 420 gallons per hour. So, so if I have 420 gallons per hour, and let's say I'm using half gallon an hour emitters, I can double that figure to 840. So on any one drip zone, I can have 840 half gallon an hour emitters. So it's quite a lot. But let's say I have a huge area to water and it's greater than that. I know I can't design any one valve that has more than that many drip emitters on. If you forget any of this information, we have a PDF on our website called Getting Started. <laughs>